Thank you for staying with us. Now, getting the best constitution for Nigeria is the task at hand, as the public hearing to amend the 1999 constitution continued on Thursday across zones in the country. Devolution of power, fiscal federalism, gender equality, uh, resource control, electoral reforms, amongst others, topped the agenda for leaders and stakeholders across uh, the regions. Of particular interest was a call for true federalism through the devolution of power to state and local governments in order to stop overburdening the federal government with too many responsibilities. Joining me to discuss this is Solicito, Solicito UK and Nigeria, Ulufemi. I know. Good morning. Yes, thank good you for morning. joining us on TVC yes, Breakfast. Yes, thank you for having me. Now, since uh, the public hearing on uh, the amendment of the Constitution, mm. uh, there's been a growing support mm. for the devolution of power. Yes. Almost across the board, Never. across the 36 states of the Federation. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that point, mm. let's look at how our founding fathers were able to ensure that uh, they managed and harnessed our resources. Yes, we had the 1953 crisis, mm. but then again, before then and afterwards, we saw that they were able to harness mm -hmm. each state or each region's potential mm -hmm. such that you could see that each region was really strengthened. Mm -hmm. You look at the cocoa of mm -hmm. the south, mm -hmm. you look at the granite pyramids mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. north, mm -hmm. and all of it. What did they do differently at the time? Yes. Let's look at history, then we know how we move from there. Yes, the point is this, because you can't compare what is happening now and with then. what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. But I do take your point, uh, not to learn what happened in the past is to remain a child. Mm -hmm. But leaving that aside, one important point is that at that point in time you are talking about there is unity, there is equality, there is patriotism. Mm. And at the same time, people believe in one Nigeria. And but we still saw the agitations then. Uh, I, because I, I mentioned there was a crisis at some point. Yes, I agree. There was a crisis at a point. At a point and those crises were resolved one way or the other. It led to civil war. At the end of the civil war, you know, there is no Victor, no vanquish, you will recall. And we move on from there to where we are now. But the fundamental is this. We need a constitution, a constitution made by the people, that we address the inequality in the society, that we ensure power is devolved, and you need an institution of government that will respect the constitution. That is how you can have an, an indivisible Nigeria. That is how we can have a Nigeria that we all believe in, that we, we all love to have. But where there is a division, where there is ethnic domination, where there is disunity, we cannot have that. So it is very important, back to your point, it is very important we put on a new spectacle and look at what happened in the past, how they addressed this issue mm. in order to move forward. I like the fact that you mentioned that we put on a new spectacle and it seems that is what the government is trying to achieve with this public hearing. Yes. The, something that will reflect the minds of, of the, the people. people. Yes. But some would say that we have gone this path in the past before and nothing happened and right that i don't want to sound too pessimistic but to be realistic that is where i have an issue whether mm -hmm. the, what is going on here we see the light of the day because mm -hmm. since 1999 when we returned to democracy there has been a series of attempts to amend the constitution so the best constitution is the people's constitution and the problem with the 1999 constitution, as you might have heard the argument left, right, and center, is that the military handed over this constitution and the people have no input. And now what the Senate have been trying to do, right from the time of Inamani up to David Mark, Saraki, all of them, is to try and make sure we have a constitution that can deal with all these various agitations that is going on. And one of the demerits of a written constitution is that it is a very, very inflexible because to amend that constitution is very time consuming and it costs a lot of money. What is going on here? They are going to spend about one billion naira mm. just for this amendment. 500 million for the Senate, 500 million for the House of Representatives. But 
the fundamental is this, whether this will see the light of the day is something, because to amend the Constitution, it is not uh, an easy exercise because it's a very rigid process. You need to third majority of the House. That means mm -hmm. in the Senate, about 57 members must support that. In the House of Representatives, it's but about so 240. Is it going to reflect <laughs> the people's mind? And, that is the, and the, another problem mm -hmm. which we are going to have, if the new Electoral Amendment Act come into force, the campaign for 2023 election is going to start in earnest. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty with that, you need us, the senators, to vote in support. And for that constitution to be amended, another problem is that 24 states out of the 36 states must agree to the amendment. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, you go back to the Senate for final deliberation and transmission to the president. And the president, under the constitution, also has the power to say, look, I'm going to veto this and send it back to the, to the Senate, in which case they have to try to vote in order to go against the president's decision. Mm. And that has never happened before, and that may not happen. And another difficulty we have here, House of Representatives, you have about 60% of the members of the House of Representatives, they are from the North. And in the Senate, I think the, the, if my mathematics is right, we have about 57. And now, some people from the North Central, the North East, they are not in support of what is going on. Right. Because some of the key components which you mentioned in your intro, they are very essential. Right. And some of them are saying, look, all these key components must remain. We don't want all this resource control. We are one region. If you have oil, keep your oil. If you have cocoa. And the money we are spending, it is a matter of serious concern. You will recall in 2014, there was a national conference. Right. And one of the recommendations is that there should be 18 additional states. Yes. Now, the APC government said, look, we are not going to implement anything that comes out of this national conference. And now, where we are now, people are agitating. Some people in Enugu state say they want another state. Those from Baoshi are saying out of Baoshi state, they want Katungo state. Those from Ogu are saying, you see, when you look at all this, yes. it begs the question, are we going to have a people's constitution. That's where that I is, was going. Yes. Because if we are, you know, at cross purposes, so to speak, because some are for, some are against, at what point would we say we want to have that conversation? That we had had a conversation, which we are yes. saying that, or some persons have even said that wasn't trusted. That is why they decided to shelve it aside. Okay. At what point would we trust each other to say, we are Nigerians. Let's have this conversation to ensure we move forward. Yes. Uh, in fact, we need, I appreciate we need to be futuristic. But that point, whether we get to that point or not, time will tell. And for us to get to that point, there must be that political will. And at the same time, these members of the National Assembly also must try as much as possible to make sure that this is not an exercise in futility. Because if you look at it, the rhetoric from the federal government has been Nigerian is an indivisible entity. entity. That has been their rhetoric. Mm. And that still remains their position. Now, you have not heard anything from the federal government whether they are in support of what is going on now. I appreciate the concept of separation of power is there. And I appreciate the fact that maybe they are waiting, let the Senate finish, and let's see what happens. But if their political will is not there. That point which you talk about, I doubt whether we should get there. But time is a good weapon. Let's wait and see. So where does this leave us? It leaves us as well, a country. Well, because <laughs> the, you, you can see that there are agitations everywhere. Mm. Our diversity is, is has to be harnessed because that is the question here mm. now, which a lot of persons are agitating mm. for. Some have said that we perhaps should stop looking at amending and re-amending mm. this constitution mm. and perhaps return mm -hmm. to the 1963 constitution mm -hmm. that perhaps that would work mm. for yes. us. Yes, no, no, that won't work because don't forget the 1963 constitution is a mirror of the 1960 constitution handed over by the colonial power. So let's even 
let's not go there. That's why you now have the 1979 and 1999 constitution. Right. And the essence of the 1979 and 1999 constitution, there was a, a bit of a people's input. But some of the arguments against that constitution is that the military that selected the people who went to the Constituent Assembly to bring this constitution to life. A majority of them, they are elite. The lower class in the society have no input. So that is why some of the people are now saying, let us have a new constitution that we have the people's input. Whether we have that or we don't, time will tell. Because time is But important. what would you prefer? What I would prefer is to have a constitution that will represent the people. What I would prefer Should it be is, new? A, is, a, is, a, is a constitution that will promote unity. What I would prefer is a constitution that will address the myriad of problems which we have in Nigeria. It is a constitution that will ensure gender equality, that will not discriminate against people, uh, against women, against citizens, a constitution that will respect international law, mm -hmm. international institutions. Whether we get that constitution or not, let's wait and see. But but having said that, I'm very hopeful, and I hope you share that. Hope. Let's wait and see. You said time is of essence. Yeah, I remember yeah. you mentioned that. Yeah. And we can't keep waiting to see. You're part of uh, the Nigeria. You're yes. a stakeholder, yes, whether we like it or not. Uh, something has to be said. And yes. the issue, again, is the aspect of the devolution of power, which mm -hmm. we talked about mm -hmm. earlier. There has been a clamoring for that, mm -hmm. where states can harness their resources. And, you know, then feed the center. Mm -hmm. But there's also a back and forth with regards yes, to that Yes, the aspect. back and forth is quite understandable because of the imbalance of these resources. One, some, some states are well resourced than the others. And now, all those states that are not well resourced, how are they going to survive? We need to think about that. And also, any mineral resources belongs to federal, uh, federal government. And the essence is that, look, Whatever we gain goes into an account, and then we share it. But if people are agitating that, look, let's keep ours, ours, you keep yours. But what if, if we don't have what happened? And we are part of one country, yeah. and that can cause all sorts of issues. But the way forward and is the political will to address all this problem. It's not an exercise you can do in one day or two days by sitting in Lagos, sitting in Kaduna and everywhere. It is something that you need to give a bit of time. But having said that, you will realize in 2014, mm. we try as much as possible to, arrest, to address all this problem. That is why we have the National Conference. And it is very disturbing. Some of the people agitating for the National Conference are the same people who are now going in on this constitutional review. It, it makes it difficult to know where they actually stand or mm. where they belong. And whether this will now address all those myriad of problems, it is something which I'm disturbed about. And having said that, I'm worried that whether this exercise, they even started too late. And I'm also concerned that by the time we go forward and backward, time will go. And what will happen? The Tenth Assembly will have to do that, mm -hmm. deal with it. And God willing, touch wood, I might be part of that Tenth Assembly. Mm -hmm. And we will go there with vigor to make sure we have a constitution that represents the people of Nigeria. We have a constitution that People, we have an input. We have institutions that will respect your right and my right. We have institutions that will respect international law and international pronouncement. Otherwise, we will still be divided as ever. At the heart of all of this, uh, if we look at it critically, is the aspect of the fact that people seem to not trust one another. Mm. That genuineness to addressing the situation facing us. Yes, we keep screaming, we have to address it. Yet we, we see that the genuineness, I don't know if that is what you refer to as the political will now, mm -hmm. yet the genuineness to really sit and say, we need to do something, mm -hmm. stare each other in the face, mm -hmm. and if, be it a roundtable discussion, let us have it. Mm -hmm. If not a roundtable discussion, let us put a process in place. Mm -hmm. But that genuineness has to be there, mm -hmm. whichever way we look at it, whatever measure mm -hmm. we put in place to addressing this issue. Mm -hmm. Why is it so 
difficult to get this genuineness, to yes. address. We know we don't have anywhere else. We don't yeah, have another yes. Nigeria. It's only one but place. this genuineness, mm -hmm. why is it so difficult? Uh, it is very difficult because, number one, there is a public mistrust. That is one. And then ethnic dominance is another issue. That You see, the genuineness you are talking about, for it to happen, Government too must be transparent. There must be equal opportunity for every citizen. But where you have a situation where there is ethnic dominance by one ethnic group over the other, where there is a mistrust that, look, this particular ethnic group cannot be president of Nigeria because of what has happened in the past. That genuineness which you and I care so much about mm. will not be there. But having said that, why I commend the Senate for what they are doing still within the ambit, but I still have a reservation whether this will see the light of the day. And that is so what can Nigerians do to ensure that <clears throat> the process that they are part of mm -hmm. sees the light of the day? The, what Nigerians should do is to put pressure on their representative to make sure that this is the light of the day. And why you are my representative in the Senate or the House of Representatives is that anything I'm concerned about, you are my mouthpiece. You are the one who is going to put it across. And what we want as in Nigeria is to have a new constitution that will address the myriad of problems. I can go there. You can go. The only thing we can do is to attend the public hearing. Mm. But if it's going to happen at all, it is the Senate. The Senate. I'm talking about both houses now. Mm. They are the one who's going to make this happen. And they are the people we need to put pressure on so that we get to where we want to be. You said, you mentioned something just now quickly, a new constitution. Is it that you want something totally new and we should shelve the society? Well, ideally, uh, that would be very costly, especially now that uh, Nigeria are going through the bread and water months. What I'm saying is that we need to have a roundtable discussion and it's going to be a robust discussion as to all the defects in this 1919 constitution so that we address them once and for all. But to have a new constitution afresh, I think uh, that's a costly exercise, but we can still address all these points, yeah, mm. one way or the other. All right. Um, quickly now, if some have said that, um, like we mentioned earlier, regionalism and all of it, perhaps. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and the, your reaction, yes, the I'm way <laughs> you, you, you're looking, <laughs> regionalism is what is the way forward. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how would it work if you are to look at regionalism, mm -hmm. if power is still at the center? Mm -hmm. All of the challenges, this, um, this you know, bottlenecks mm -hmm. that we see mm -hmm. at this time. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, if we are to have that, what do you see as being a solution to how regions we relate if we say we want to add yes mm -hmm. if we want to address this aspect uh, or are, adopt that well uh, well <laughs> the issue is very simple all those are issues which the constitution will try to address and the point you are making about regional autonomy mm -hmm. we've been here all these things have been addressed in the past but nothing happened and you will recall that even pre-independence there has been series of conferences in order to uh, ensure we have regional autonomy, in order to address the right of minority. The last conference before independence was in 1958. And the system of government, we've tried the parliamentary government when Tafawa Balewa was the prime minister. We are now in a presidential system of government. We're still everything. complaining. The question is what type of government do, do we really want? need in Nigeria? <laughs> because if the presidential system doesn't work, if the parliamentary system doesn't work, what has? The only thing left is if we want a confederation, whereby Nigeria will join the public of Benin to be one country. And you see, these are the issues which I'm very concerned about. Mm. That, okay, what system of government do we really do want, we really want mm. that we address all these problems? If you talk about regional, there must be devolution of power. I agree. And at the same time, concentration of power which flow from this 99 constitution is very disturbing and it's not in the people's interest. If, but if we want to devolve power, even the United Kingdom, 
they have an act of devolution, whereby those in Scotland, they can take, they have their own parliament. The Welsh, they have their own parliament. Mm -hmm. The Scots, they have their own parliament. And by the act of devolution, they can take, their parliament can take a decision on one or two things. But the ultimate decision rests with the central government. Maybe that is the way to go. And the constitution, because we have the state house of assembly, right. but that concentration of power, it is something we need to look at to make sure power is involved. To the, the regions. regions. Yeah. All right. We we'll leave the conversation here now. Asolicito, UK and Nigeria, Ulufemi Aino, thank you for your time on thank the program. Thank you for all the time.